I never dreamed when I sat writing that book that my little Emma from Leeds and the little girl from Leeds, me, would write this big bestseller that would thrill millions of people. I was an only child and I, I once said to my husband Bob when we were in England, it's always raining these days. When I was growing up, I don't remember it raining. It was always sunny. And he said that's because you were so happy. And he was right. I got a job on the Yorkshire Evening Post and my mother said, when I was going for the interview, my mother said, but, uh, I better come with you and I said no no I'll never get the job if my mother's leading me by the hand <laughs> I've always been very well organized and you have to be with organized in your head too when you're writing fiction because you've got a lot of characters and you've got to organize them and tell a story and make them tell a story. You're playing God. Barbara Mrs. Taylor Bradford for services to literature. Often when I'm signing books in a bookstore, or indeed when I'm at a cocktail party or whatever, at some social function, people will come up to me and say, Barbara, tell me, how do I write a best-selling novel? I know I've got a story in me. <laughs> hey, what are you scribbling at now? That's no way to make your fortune, scribbling. But how do I make it a bestseller? They like your novel? They do. They want to publish it? They do. <laughs> How wonderful, it's what you always wanted. And my answer is always the same. If you set out by thinking you're going to write a bestseller and become rich and famous, then it won't happen. She instilled into me the desire to succeed. But if I hadn't been for her, I'd probably have ended up like my Aunt Lorette, working in a shop. I don't know how to tell people to write a bestseller because I have no formula. All I do is sit down and try to tell a good story about one single character because to me, character is plot. 
You look like a gentleman, but you're nothing. You're less than the dirt under my feet. I won't be seeing you again, Edwin Fairley. Never. As long as I live. In other words, what the person is inside is going to tell their life story. There is no formula, and I think most writers would tell you the same. It's a rich woman, Emma Hart is aiming to be. Oh my God, she's got a force like a hundred horses inside her. It was Graham Greene, the late English author, who said exactly that, character is plot. Tell me, Audra, why are you so anxious to start draining at once? Because I want to do something with my life. And I can't afford to waste any more time. And when I read that interview with him in the 70s, I truly understood what writing fiction was all about. Because he was saying, character is destiny. <laughs> <laughs>